Hello and welcome to our latest virtual bridge session. Joined today by Lindsay and Sean from Ayrshire College um, to talk all about the virtual. Like, do, do I have to be wearing like something gorgeous, <laughs> Lindsay? I mean, do, I'm, I'm all excited. I just, <laughs> I want to get into the virtual world. Like, can I touch things? They're like, well, that, does that work? No. Okay. So <laughs> I, feel, I feel it's going to be better for you to explain to us how you've been delving into virtual in early year setting. So over to you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks very much for that introduction, Kenji. And I will get to the, the, the virtual reality part in a wee while. Um, I just want to say thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Good morning to you. My name is Lindsay Pack and I'm Curriculum Manager for the Early Years Department at Ayrshire College. Uh, and joining me today are my colleague Sean Robertson's here. So he's the learning technologist that's aligned with our area. And also Kevin Skade's here, who's actually been a huge inspiration for this project because we started talking about it two years ago when I first joined the college. Some of you have already heard this, but um, we were talking a wee bit earlier about the health and social care department within uh, Ayrshire College had worked with the local fire department to simulate a water rescue um, at Air Campus because they have the river right beside them. So they had simulated a rescue, a, a, a river rescue, and they had used the 360 degree camera um, to record that. So that's what actually Kevin and I started talking about how we could use 360 degree camera to capture early years environments. Uh, we had a wee bit of play around with it in some of the early years classrooms. Um, at that point, I was using something called Story Sphere. So I was actually um, uploading, you know, wee sound clips and things like that. Uh, and the plan was always at that point to actually get out into the early years establishments around Ayrshire and get a really good selection of 360 degree environments. Um, so that was around two years ago. Um, when I moved from Kilmarnock campus to Cowinning campus, that was when I started to talk to um, people who work in North Ayrshire Council. So Yvonne was really, really keen for us to get into some of their environments. They had been developing environments. Um, lots of their uh, nurseries um, really, you'll see from the, the tour when I do it, use really homely, nurturing, muted colours, lots of natural resources. So they were really, really keen to show them off. So the plan was for me at some point to take my camera around different environments and get 360 degree photos. Uh, and then of course, COVID-19 came along and that didn't happen. Um, we were still really, really keen to do it, but Yvonne was very much like, you know, our, our nurseries don't look like they normally do. We don't have any um, soft furnishings. You know, lots of our resources have had to be put away because of, you know, cleaning and contamination procedures and things like that. So <laughs> we're very lucky on a uh, co-winning campus that we have a practical nursery. Um, it was a, a working nursery at one time. Now we use it as a classroom. So the plan changed and some members of the quality improvement team and myself actually um, spent three, four days actually transforming what we use as a classroom with some practical spaces round about it into what you're going to see today, which is more like a typical early years setting. So um, that was in collabor collaboration with North Ayrshire Council's quality improvement team. Um, so that was, that was fantastic. So at that point, I was able to go in, use the camera, which I'll share with you in a wee minute, um, take lots of different um, images from lots of different points within the nursery. I think we've got six different areas. Um, role play area, creative area, you know, a kind of general playroom, literacy, construction. Uh, and at that point was when I contacted Sean and I said, right, Sean, I've done this. I've got these 360 degree images. What am I going to use for this virtual tour? And it was Sean who recommended uh, around me. And the vision was always, you know, moving through you the same way when you go on and you look at, you know, different um, houses on right move and things like that. Sometimes they come with a virtual tour. So that, that's what we've created. Um, Sean, do you want to say anything about Round Me at this point? <laughs> no, no, I think it's kind of probably better to kind of have a, have a look at it, I suppose, is maybe try to, to explain it. Um, 
from that. I mean, there's there's loads of these kind of stuff out there. Um, but around me offers kind of quite a lot for for free, which in college setting free is good. Yeah, it's like everything else, isn't it? It's free to a point. So, and it goes by how many uh, uploads you put on it. So you could probably have around two or three different tours before you would have to start paying a subscription fee. So I've got two on there at the moment and I've still got something like five more images I can upload. Uh, so it's really good. But obviously if you're working in a department, you know, that's one person could have, you know, two or three tours and another person could have two or three tours. So uh, it's, 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 it's quite quite a good deal. Um, you can also pay for other features as well if you wanted to only be able to share with uh, certain people, certain email addresses, you can pay extra for that. But I'll just use the free version because it's quite good. So I'm not sure at this point whether to just show you a wee bit about the, the technology. So this is this is probably more Sean's domain. So this is a, a Theta camera. Um, you can see that there's a, a fisheye lens on both sides here. Uh, and this is what I use to take the pictures. I got myself a... Um, a tripod off of Amazon for about £10 uh, and it was so easy to attach this to it. You sync it up to an iPad. We use an iPad at Ayrshire College. There's a, there's a special app called the Theta app. Now you can use it on an iPad, you can use it on a Android tablet or just on your phone, but we're using the iPad at the moment. Um, except terms of service. So I've got all my 360 degree images on here uh, and I'll just show you the tour in a wee second. So literally once it's synced up, <laughs> the hardest bit of actually using this is finding a place to hide when you take the picture because you have to like run out, hide, and then press the button on the iPad to take the picture. Um, and that's how you create the pictures, really, really simple. And I'm not a very tech savvy person, so if I can do it, you can do it. Uh, and one other thing I noticed, because it's got the fish eye on either side, there's this flat bit. You want to try and line this flat bit here up with something that you, you don't want it to be like going over a main focal point. And you'll see when I show you the tour, there's some wee blurred edges somewhere. So you want that to be maybe pointing at a door or a bit of wasted space so that you don't see the join. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you that once I put the tour up. Um, so that's the tech I use, just the iPad, the Theta app and the camera. There's lots of information about the camera on YouTube and things like that as well. And I can see, Kenji, you're putting information up in the chat for people. So thank you very much. Uh, and at this point, I'm just going to share my screen if that's all right. And if I can just hide this. OK, so I've created a wee um, flow page with all my links. I don't know if we could maybe even share that with everyone after um, the session. So my name's Lindsay Pack, Sean Robertson. I've put my email address details here in case anybody wants to contact me for more information about this. Um, or if anybody wants to collaborate as well, that would be really good because we've got these tours that people can use. If anyone else is going out and creating their own tours, it would be fab if we could share and collaborate. That would be amazing. So I'm going to click this link and it will take me through to Round Me. Um, and it will take us into the, the virtual tour. So uh, this particular tour is linked to um, the unit supporting a curriculum in early education and childcare. Our level six students uh, do a course called Early Learning Childcare Level Six. Um, it's based on the NPA, the NPA award, uh, but we also use some of the older NC higher units. So we still use supporting a curriculum. So this unit is really good to link to the uh, supporting a curriculum unit because it's all about setting up an environment, layout of the environment, um, just admit this person, layout of the environment, presentation of resources and that type of thing. So we've got a kind of general overview. You can see just here, slightly blurred. That's what I was talking about a second ago where you want to make sure you're, you're lining up. If I'd moved that a fraction there, 
um, the blurred area would have been here or at the door or something like that. So uh, once I uploaded the 360 degree photos, um, I was able to upload them onto Round Me and then I have the different areas around the bottom. So it's not like you can click on arrows and move around them, but you just click on the different areas. So this is uh, the literacy area. So we had set up a little uh, reading corner. Obviously, this isn't a working nursery, so we did the best we could. We've got this quite big bit of kit here, the loft, we call it, which we couldn't really move out the way. But obviously, we understand that, you know, um, it was the best we could do with what we had at the time. This probably isn't um, something you would have in a typical three to five room. Uh, and you probably wouldn't have it right beside a kind of quiet reading corner either. But I, I just I, I made that into a question uh, in one of the hot spots. We've also got a construction area. So I'm doing this on my computer, which is uh, a bit harder to navigate. The students uh, tend to use their phones, which means they can pinch and they can zoom in and zoom out. I mean, I've got a wee, I can zoom in and zoom out as well because I've got that function on my mouse. I'll, I will explain a wee bit more about the hotspots in a second. I'll just show, show the environment first. Um, over here, in this wee kind of corner, we've got a role play area set up as a home corner at the moment. So the students can explore the different resources. We've got wee things up in the wall so they could probably zoom in and, and read what will you wear today? Who will you be today? And we've got different resources here that we can zoom in and out of to have a look at, as well as you know the wee tea set and the realistic, authentic materials that we've got. Um, over here, we've got kind of the kind of water area, uh, numeracy area as well. A uh, wee bit of small world here and just included a hot spot here that shows you what the foyer looks like. Because we had set up, you know, we wanted to set it up as if we were welcoming the parents in and we would have, a, 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 you know, our wee resources and a wee borrow library and things like that. So it gives the students, gets the students thinking about how you welcome parents and children into the setting as well. Uh, and then finally, over here, we've got the creative area. Um, any questions at this point before I start to talk about some of the, the hot spots? Can I just quickly ask, Lindsay, um, yep. did you have to give your students any training to get used to using this environment? Well, we didn't give the students any training. Uh, actually, it was really, they were the guinea pigs, almost, these level six students. What would have been really useful was um, if we'd maybe done it with, with a smaller group first and scaled it up because then we would have maybe got some of the snagging out the way. So some of the snagging that we realised was if you use Internet Explorer, it doesn't work. You need to use a newer browser like Google Chrome uh, and things like that. And also, um, if you accidentally hit this eye in the corner, it toggles the hotspots off. <laughs> I feel like what is a hotspot not? <laughs> um, so we've got these hotspots embedded around the tour. If if this is clicked off, the hotspots don't appear. <laughs> so we had students who were going, I can't see what you guys are talking about. Um, so yeah, in answer to your question, it would have been quite good to get some of that snagging out of the way. Um, but once they were able to get these hot spots toggled back on, they were able to access it in the same way that the uh, the other students were. Some found that they weren't able to do it as well on their their, their computer, and it was better on their phone. Um, I actually quite like it both ways. And <laughs> you'll notice <laughs> when you kind of stop uh, moving it or interacting with it, it just kind of slowly spins. Um, and we found that some people <laughs> had a wee issue with that because they get motion sickness. So that was something that we weren't expecting to crop up as a result, uh, that it would give uh, people motion sickness. So it doesn't do it when you're interacting with it. Okay, any other questions or will I just start showing some of the hot spots? Yeah. Okay. So um, the tour itself, 
uh, is good for giving the students a feel for what the early learning environment is like. Some of our students, you know, these are level six students, they're direct entrance into the course. They haven't been in an early childhood centre since they were at nursery themselves. Um, so we wanted to try and bring it to life a wee bit more. So we've got uh, questions embedded throughout using these hotspots and you are able to add links to these hotspots. So you could potentially put a link in that would take them to a poli particular policy document, for example, and you can also upload photos. So I had uploaded this photo here to show, you know, the current selection of resources, but also a question, how would you create labels for this area that would support early literacy, but also support independence? So there's reflective questions prompting them all the way through. Um, this one in particular, if you're familiar with the NPA award, there is a case study within it called Rosie. Um, she's three years and four months. She's, she's settling into nursery, but she's um, more comfortable talking with early years practitioners, still reluctant to participate and play with other children. So we're actually making links between the different units within the award here because uh, we're encouraging them to uh, think about how they would set up the creative area based on Rosie's interests and, you know, being creative uh, to encourage her to interact with her peers. So we've got a little bit here, uh, and I just put a wee picture in for the, the rosy case study as well. Um, another hotspot we've got in this area, you can see the camera there. So you'll notice when you look down the, the tripods there. <laughs> um, so this is a self-service door area. Uh, and the question is basically asking the students to think about how they would improve the presentation in the area that would support a child to access resources independently and make their own dole. And I'll come back to that in a wee second because one of the students, Paula, has actually responded to that question and created a PowerPoint and she's spoken about the things she would do to change the area and develop the area, which is exactly what this resource is all about, getting them to reflect on their role and how and prepare them for assessment. So this is the creative area. Some hot spots, there's, there's three or four hot spots there. Um, I'll go over to the construction area now. So this one, obviously the block area is all about labeling the resources because we've got the shadow labels here. So it's what do you notice about the labeling in this area? How does it enable the children to take ownership over tidying the resources? So you would be hoping they would talk about how the shadow labels help them, the fact that we've got pictures and words to show what's in these baskets and things. And I, I like the fact that when you click on it, it pops up with a picture as well. Um, makes it more vis visual, more, more interesting. Um, and when I do the feedback that the students have given, um, you'll see that, you know, a lot of them are visual learners and they really like the visual aspects embedded throughout the tour as well. Um, we've got a wee one here, which is showing, you know, what other areas of the curriculum are we working on when we're developing um, skills in the construction area, because we've got inch tapes and different types of paper, mark making resources and things. Okay, and then I'll just quickly um, go to the role play area. So we have the uh, laid out with the, the, the tea set. So at this point we put in a question and it was myself and like a, a working group of lecturers who actually delivered the unit, uh, three of them and myself. Um, they were the ones who went through the unit spec and suggested what questions we would embed here and at what point. So it was very much a team effort creating this resource. Um, all I did was create the kind of basic tour and then they've enhanced it. So because we're using authentic resources, um, we're asking the students to demonstrate their understanding of their role by making links to legislation or codes of practice that guide the safe selection and maintenance of resources. So you'd be hoping that, you know, they would be understanding that we have real resources because we would be modeling and interacting with the children, encouraging respect for the resources, but that accidents do happen and getting them to link that information to codes of practice and legislation as well. Uh, and just one final one, perhaps, if I go into the, the, the back into the three 
three to five room as well. Um, we, we don't have a mark making area set up here, although because we were quite time constrained, we decided to do some key areas. Um, it's probably, you know, going forward, we might develop it even further. So we just added in a wee question here about mark making. So posing the questions to the students that they'd been asked to develop the literacy area to provide more opportunities for mark making. Consider the selection layout and presentation resources and also asking them to consider how they would incorporate opportunities for mark making throughout the playroom. And one of the level six students, Candice, actually created a little video um, round about different everyday mark making opportunities. And she gathered stuff up from around the house, like sand and rice. Um, and she also made stamps and things like that to actually, so she, she, she was prompted by that question to then go and make her own video that could be shared with parents um, about how you could do everyday mark making opportunities as well. Um, at, so at the moment, students are, are, are engaging with us using their phones, following the link, using their phones, engaging with the hotspot, zooming in, in and out. But there are options to make it virtual. Um, I'm not entirely sure up here. There is a way you can switch the view to a VR view. Um, I don't know, maybe even if Sean or Kevin want to speak a bit more about that, because it's like using like a little cardboard holder that you would place your phone in um, and then they would be able to kind of divide the screen into two halves and then they would be able to actually, as they moved around, the tour would move around. Is that right, guys? Yeah, that, that's right enough. Um, as long as the phone, and I think Kenji mentioned it in the, the chat, has uh, got a gyroscope. Uh, now, most students have a relatively new iPhone or uh, a Samsung, so... That, that's fine, but if it's like an, an, old, an old phone, then chances are that it, it won't work with it. And like I said, as early days, they've only just started using this resource as well. So um, potential for seeing how that would work probably still to come. And we also, um, you know, I, I, I see this as being a perfect opportunity once we are back on campus for the students actually to come into this practical nursery and them to set up the environment and take their own 360 degree photos. So almost flipping it round so that then um, it would actually be them presenting their virtual tour to the lecturers and the lecturers assessing how they had set up the environment and presented the environment. It's probably a really interesting aspect here. Because like I said before, the technology is really, really easy to use. So I could see how the students could go in, set up the area, take their own pictures, and then create their own tour for the lecturer to assess as well, which is quite interesting. Okay, if I go back. Any questions at this point? Lindsay, can I just quickly ask you, mm -hmm. you demonstrated a few questions that you displayed in the yeah. hotspots. How, how do the students, how do you collect the responses from the students? Okay, so um, really that point has been left kind of up to the, like, the individual lecturers to decide. Um, this was one of the units that we started in block two, so we're right in the middle of it. So there's probably opportunities to evaluate how that went. I know some people were planning on setting up a Padlet where there was maybe a wall with photographs posted and then the students could post their responses on the Padlet. Um, other students were, other, other lecturers were planning on um, getting the, the students to submit their responses through likes of forms or an assignment on teams so we're actually trying lots of different options as a course team and uh, we'll probably review it um, and see what worked best brilliant and and so sh shall we open it up to the room um does anyone have a question for for lindsay or sean indeed can I ask, Lindsay, how easy is it to set up these hotspots? The hotspots are really easy to set up. Um, I'll click back here. There's a little, this is how you edit. So you just flip this eye onto edit mode 
grab a hot spot, put it there, type in your title, your description. Like I said, you can add your, your photographs and you can add a link as well. Um, so if I just type in, I'll just do... No, I'm not going to save it, actually. I'll tell you why I'm not going to save it in a second. I'm going to turn that edit mode off. So um, once you've generated your tour link and you've put the link out there, if you then go back in and edit it, it generates a new link. So then you have to reshare the link. So that's why I just pulled off there. But it is really easy just to toggle that on, drag and drop your hotspots and, and pop your information in. Lovely, thank you. No problem. And then if I unshare, <laughs> boy, share. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, one from me quickly. Am I right in saying it's possible to record video as well as just stills with the camera setup? Um, Sean, you might be able to help me. I didn't. I didn't know if if you could or not. But Sean, you could maybe help. Yeah, we, you can make videos with it as well yeah um i'll say, share a story and um, one of the interesting um early uses that i came across of virtual reality and it was using uh, google cardboard so they actually fold up the cardboard and put your phone in version was um, quite a few years ago but uh, and it's when the cameras were much more expensive and it was about a, a social work lecturer who had a class of new to social work uh, students and used to show them a video about a difficult situation that they might be involved with in a discussion around professionalism and what it meant to be a social worker. And it was an interview between uh, someone playing the part of a client. And in fact, it was a mother who was potentially faced with their children being taken off her and a social worker. And, um, and the students, when they saw the video, obviously got to think about it. But then she took it one further and she recorded the interaction using one of these cameras, video recording between the two participants. And the students put on their Google Cardboard with their phones in it. And if you look left, they saw the social worker. And if you look the right, they saw the the, the, the actress who was playing the part of the client and uh, and um, seemingly it was, as you would guess, a much more immersive and indeed emotional experience to be there. And the students reflected that it much more prepared them for the sort of situations that they might be in. And the lecturer reflected that one thing that didn't work well was the mix of Google Cardboard and tears. Uh, they didn't go very well together, unfortunately, because it was, a, uh, but it was designed for them to think about the sort of situations that they'd go into. Um, I, I just wonder about the um, sort of, in the, uh, again, there's something about the, the imagination as to how all this technology might be used. And I think we're seeing a very good example here. And I wonder if there's um, ways in which interactions as well as locations can therefore be captured, whether you've thought about that sort of extension of the use of it. Absolutely. I mean, I would love to have children in the space interacting and we could record their own, even if it's my own kids, you know, we've all got young kids ourselves. So um, that, that would be absolutely fantastic to have links to, to the, the live videos of live interactions and case studies um, would, would be fabulous because just as the students have fed back that it's really supported them in terms of what the layout of a traditional early years setting is, because some of them had no frame of reference, really. They said it gave them something. One of the students actually said, I'll just read that out at this point, it, the, the, the feedback came through this morning, so I didn't have time to type it up, but I thought I need to say this. So she said she found the resource very useful. Sometimes when she's reading course notes, she picks up something completely different in her mind than what the notes are telling me. So being able to use this virtual resource, she was able to get all her information and see clearly what, what, what was being spoken about. Um, and it was really easy to, for her to use and follow and understand at that point. Sometimes we don't give credence to, you know, what um, frameworks they have in their brain that they're able to build upon, you know, for some of these, these girls in, uh, and guys in our courses, uh, they maybe haven't been in an early year setting since. And I think sometimes as lecturers, we can forget that since they were kids themselves. So they don't really have a recent frame of reference to go on. And that certainly gives them it. 
Okay, Lindsay, that's that's brilliant. Um, <laughs> covers the questions I was about to ask you as well about going <laughs> forward and <laughs> and feedback from your students. So, um, th unfortunately, that's all we have time for uh, for this recorded part of the session. For those of you joining us via YouTube and seeing the recording, um, I'm sorry, but you know, hopefully, you'll be able to join us uh, for a future live session. So, all that remains is for me to thank uh, Lindsay and and Sean uh, for your input today. And uh, until we see you again, stay safe. <laughs>